Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve of Soap Moss Gaming and today we're going to get right into creative. Okay, so first you're going to hit square if you're playing on PS4. If you're not, just follow the prompts. And then you're going to hit R2 to create new. Then you select your island type. For this one, I think I'm just going to use the block because it'll be good for a 1v1 map and we're going to uh, we're going to call it build battle 1v1 And then you can change the description and things later. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to load this up. And in order to make this type of map, you need to know how to use barriers. So for the so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fly over here. If you don't know how to fly, you double click your jump button real quick. And I'm going to count how many squares this block is. Because I'm just going to use this block size for the base of the 1v1 area. I'm going to wall it off. You'll see in a moment. Okay. I'm going to go 12 down. So right here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And right here, I'm going to build a floor. And then I'm going to go into creative. Go over with R2 until I get to devices. And then I'm going to equip myself with a barrier. It gives me five automatically, as you can see down there. I'm going to back out of here. And then I'm going to rebuild the floor, essentially. Double click square to bring it up. Now I have what looks like the base for a barrier. And it's going to say customize barrier. I'm going to click the button for that. And it brings up this other menu, barrier style, invisible. So this is where you can select how you want it to be. Do you want to be able to see through the barrier and still have it there? You would select invisible if that's the case. Translucent, that typically means that it's going to uh, be see-through, but it has a color to it. Kind of like what is used in Zone Wars. Pure black means it's just going to be a straight black wall. Stone means it's going to look like a stone wall. Thread plate, it's going to look like those black threaded plates. Brick, it's going to look like a, a brick wall. Gloss black, it's just like it says. And you can just go through all of these and figure out which ones you like. So for this one, because I like the way it looks so much and I haven't done a map with this color in the background yet, I think I'm going to do a nebula red. And now, base visible during game no that means this plate that you're looking at to the right of the menu that indicates there's a barrier there can you see that during the game i'm just going to put no it really doesn't matter you're not going to be able to see it anyway but no is the answer barrier width now this is there's 25 like we just counted there's 25 squares so we're going to make that the width it's going to be 25 Okay, so we can't make it 25. We're going to have to make it 30. It's fine if it overlaps. You'll see why later. Barrier, barrier depth. That means how many of those squares wide is it? The thickness of it. It's kind of irrelevant other than the fact that you need it to be at least one. You can make it half, but for this we need it at least one because there's some weird things that happen if you don't make it at least one. But you can make it one, two, three, four, whatever you like. For this video, we're going to make it one. Barrier height, that means how tall is it? Like, how? what's the ceiling? So I don't think you can really go much higher than uh, 60 or 80 in terms of when you're building without hitting a ceiling. So I'm just going to go 60, all right? And now that's the initial dimensions. And now there's some other things here. It says enable and receiving from. We don't need to really worry about that for the sake of this video. But it gives you more dynamic uh, capabilities you can stop you can turn the barrier on and turn it off based on using other mechanisms like uh, 
buttons and things like that but we're not going to worry about that we want it on from the start of the match and if you jump up here or fly up here i should say you, you turn and you look back now you have a nebula barrier that spans the width of this block here plus some extra because it's over the 25 and then it goes 60 tiles high these squares are what's called tiles like these grid squares are tiles and if you notice it when you put down a floor piece each tile each floor takes up one tile okay so then you go over here and if it's 25 that way it's probably 25 this way so we just want to count 12 from the end 12 all right and we'll put another barrier here same way as the other one and I'm gonna repeat this for all four sides I'll probably edit out every little bit of it okay so now as you can see I'm inside and you can see it all the way around then you look up though there's no ceiling it doesn't look the same so you got to go up there to create a ceiling if you want to have a ceiling if you don't want it to be viewable you go to the top side over here okay so it's starting to already make me go down which is why we only make it about 60 or 50 okay so now what I'm going to do to make the ceiling is I'm gonna go into creative go to devices and what I'm looking for is a floating platform there it is hover platform and now you equip that you're gonna put it into your tray by hitting I just hit the left d-pad now it shows up when I back out of here it's there still now I can select L2 I hit the left d-pad and there it is see it pops up now what I want to do with this is keep it right around where we're at and I'm gonna put it right into the side drops are off if you notice to the left where it says triangle drops off another thing too is it says grid snap 4 when I'm doing anything that needs to be symmetrical like walls like this I usually do a grid snap 4 because it makes it really easy to line things up that means there's four it's like each each block is broken up into fourths so as you can see there's one fourth of it hanging out of the nebula barrier there's half of it and now I'm falling okay so I need to get back up where I was all right just be before the ceiling see if you fly to this orangish red barrier here it just knocks you back down anyway I don't want to be knocked down I just want to place this barrier so I need to go I, I held down triangle to get to this now I hold L2 I put the barrier there and now I'm gonna place it by hitting R1 on my d-pad I mean on my controller okay no I'm sorry R2 is what it is like the trigger button the shoot button R1 rotates as you can see there but you can change it on all that later I'll explain that as necessary so now I've placed this pad and now I need to go ahead and put my barrier on here okay I can stand on it see it's floating so I'm gonna go select barrier again because I think it's not any any longer in there okay I want to get it right on here I don't know why this is all off kilter As long as this doesn't show up in there, it doesn't matter to me if it's that or not. It's over here or not. So I'm just going to make it the same and see what we got here. Nebula red, base visible during game. No. Barrier width. Now, so we have 25 by 25 by 25, but this is off in the corner. So I'm going to have to kind of guess how big it needs to be. And I'm just going to say 60 because... I think that's about what it is. Barrier depth really doesn't matter to me. 
bare height. We're going to say a half tile because we don't want that red thing to get in the way. Let's see what happens here. I stop myself in there so I can look up and see. Now, we do not have a ceiling because looks like it might have went over this way. Okay, so see here. I didn't do the dimensions correctly, but it came out this way. It's really, really thin. It's super wide, which is not what I was looking for. I need it to be longer too, so let me try something else. Okay. So instead of 60 as the width, I'm gonna make that 30. And the depth we're gonna make really large. Let's see if that fixes the problem. Okay, there we go. Now, if you look, once you're inside of this block here, you stand down here and look up, you shouldn't see anything. But see how this is blue right here? That means I'm off just a little bit. Here, depth, I'm going to make 100. Make that 40 just in case. That should take care of it. That's the only two things I can really control. Let's see what happens. Now, everything looks like nebula red on the inside of my map. Now, we can focus on the floor. I'm going to hold L2, and I'm going to hit select this one. So this one here is the threaded plate I like. And then the place that you hit the, the right number two. Okay. I think that looks pretty cool, but I don't know how I, I think it would look with it being a whole bunch of them and the nebula background. It makes it kind of cool sound, but maybe that'd be annoying if you're falling down. I don't know. I kind of like it. All right, let's see what else we got. See, the grid snap floor is this. You see that you go a little bit, that's one space, two space three space four space now that's a a whole tr whole tile it's four spaces see that so I just put two down but let's look at that oh yeah I like that that's kind of cool but how does it look with the nebula I don't think that matches too well with nebula I don't think either of them match that well this one actually because it's darker it definitely looks cooler overall. The other thing to consider when you're doing a map like this is how does this floor mesh with the other pieces you're going to put in here? And you'll see what I mean by that coming up. Let's try another piece of floor here. We got this one. Oh, I really like that. I think that's really smooth looking. That sounds cool. You walk on it. I'm going to go with this wood floor because I really like it. And then now I'm going to stop this recording and start again later once I've placed the whole floor because I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me place the whole floor down and how boring that is. But I'm going to start in one corner. You'll be able to see the beginning of it. And I'm just going to walk around this whole thing and fill up every square with the same exact thing. And then after that, I'll restart the video. Also, I'm switching to Grid Snap too because it'll be even faster for this. You see how quick that goes? Then you just basically run around, placing it once you know you're the two grid snaps. Okay, everybody, I'm back. And I'm going to show you how to make the ramps here. What I'm going to do is go into Galleries, Military, Gallery B, and I'm going to choose red, even though it doesn't seem like the color matters. 
and I'm going to open that with triangle I'm going to the ramp I'm selecting X equip I'm gonna put it in my quick bar by selecting triangle it's really already there because I had already done this in advance but I just wanted to show you the steps okay so now I'm going to hold down L2 again hit triangle there's one side just going to rotate the same piece that's already there and lay that down there's the other side now you can see the ramp is together and I should be able to build if I put it in the right place so I didn't I'm gonna keep that there as a reference and just place the ramps on either side of that to make sure you can build properly because otherwise what is a good build paddle if you can't do what you're supposed to do and that over there now in order to be able to run up the ramp and continue building you need to have this here now, I'll show you the difference if you look right here now on this side as I run up I can place a ramp and keep going right now if you go on this side you want to run up and build you can't it doesn't allow you to until you fall off so I think it looks uglier to do this and I really don't like it as much but I would guess if it were me and I took the time to build the first ramp initially on my build battle map and I wanted to do a 1v1 I wouldn't want to fall off of it because then otherwise you could just build it yourself to start so I'm going to have those there because I don't know a better way right now but if somebody else does please comment down below tell me how I can do that give me detailed instructions on which prefabs to pull up which ramp to pull up because I know that there's a black one that I've seen people use that seems to allow you to build on it because it's a wedge but I haven't found it yet and I did look for it I even stopped to research it I just didn't find what I was looking for so anyway I'm gonna move forward you see right here now we have a great start to a build battle now a lot of the rest of this is customization but there's one more thing that I'm going to do before I start placing player spawns you know I'll do the player spawns first because that, that's a logical progression the player spawns you can put wherever you like I personally I think that putting them behind the ramps is cool on a floating platform and then you can just walk right down onto it but really it's probably best if you just put them to the sides so I'm gonna take away the floor I already put there now there I'm gonna make four of them that way you can have your buddies watch but there's also other ways just to allow people to spectate that I've seen in other maps and I think that, that would be cool too and I'm gonna look into showing you how to do that if I can't figure out how to do that in a reasonable amount of time before I want to put this video out then I'll have to show you that in another video either way I'm going to learn it and you'll learn it as well with me so we're gonna go into devices player hit player sp spawn select X to equip it now it shows that we have five I'm going to select those now we customize them one at a time team one two three four now four people can spawn in here you really don't need that many obviously you only need two but people want to spectate with their friends and that's why you put extra ones in here so that they can spawn otherwise they'll spawn outside of the barrier which is what this nebula red color is and they won't be able to see anything and it'll just be a waste of time so four is fine one friend on each side can come in and, and check out what's going on so now next 
Now, essentially, you could just play like this. You don't have any guns. You could just do a build battle, see who gets hype first. But obviously, you want to use guns. You want to be able to clear the builds, and that's where the next stuff is coming in. I grab a button and put it in my quick bar. If you see to the left of where I put that button, there's already a vending machine. That's one of the things I'm going to do to personalize this map because I think it's going to look really cool and have a nice function. Also, while I'm in here, I'm going to grab the explosive device and that will help you to clear the builds. Now I'm going to do a simple one use only button, but uh, you can make it if you know how to program things a little bit more advanced to keep using that same button over and over again. And as I get better and creative, I'll learn how to do that. And if you know how, comment down below. Please tell me how to do that if you know and I don't. Because I've only been using Fortnite and Fortnite, Fortnite Creative for about three months. But I've used it a lot and I've made a lot of maps already. Spent a lot of time doing it. And I like to share what I have with other people. Now I'm also going to grab a pinball bumper and you'll see why shortly. And I think that's all I need for right now. And maybe even the rest of the map. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place my button right on the side of this build. Turn it around so that it faces where you're at. I'm also going to resize it by holding circle and then hitting the left trigger button. Now you see it's a very small button. It be kind of hard to find. However, if you're looking for it, you'll find it. But now it's, it's not in the way. It's face height. And I'm going to put that any team can activate it. The trigger sound is enabled, so you know you triggered it. The interaction text, I'm going to, to type up. Uh, push. To clear builds. You can type in whatever you want. But I want the person playing my map to clearly understand what this button will do, why it's there, even before they push it. And now, this is important. When interacted with, that means when the button's pushed, transmit on, I'm going to put channel 1. And the reason why is, on top of here, I'm going to put my explosive device. Then you hit square to customize it. And it says health. That means the health of the explosive device, which is really irrelevant, so I'm leaving it at one. It's irrelevant for what we're doing. If you want to customize it other ways, it's basically saying, just like the player's health, how, what does it take to kill or get rid of this thing? But it's going to be indestructible, so we don't have to worry about it. But blast radius, we're going to say five and that means five tiles just like I showed you at the beginning how you count the tiles to know where the middle is this is five tiles and every tile that you do a build battle in should eventually come back to the ramp so you don't really need more than five tiles if you do you can place the explosive devices in other areas and and then trigger one to the other and that's that's more in-depth programming that I want to get into right now and even more than I've done myself I'm sure I could figure it out over time, but either way, this is all you need to know for the sake of this map, so I won't bore you with any more details. Player damage. You want this at zero. You don't want it to take your health away when you're clearing the builds. Structure damage. Like it says in the bottom, sets the amount of damage dealt to environment props within the explosion radius. I'm just going to put this at, say, 300. That way, if anybody's building a metal, it should get rid of that too. Explode on proximity range off because it's not it's not you're not trying to just have something be near it and make it explode you're having it triggered through the button so then you go to the next set of options by hitting r1 and proximity delay is off we don't need that ignore team for proximity none time to detonation from game start is off because we are not having a countdown for this thing to blow up it's going to be triggered by the button play audio slash vfx which means visual fx or effects um, I'm going to say no because I don't really want that I just want the builds to be cleared range visualization off meaning when you're in a certain distance you see the 
the explosive device visible during the game no you don't really need to see it you just need it to function the way you want collision during games on determines whether the device has collision properties during the game we want to collide with everything and then uh, we may want to change it. I, I have to double check I want to make sure it doesn't ruin the barrier I don't think it's even close enough to do so or ruin the floor we don't want that uh, show health bar no we don't need to see the health of it health bar style doesn't matter HUD doesn't that's heads up display don't, don't need anything for that requires line of sight yes I suppose it really doesn't matter team visibility any friendly eye contacts we don't need to write any personalized messages that's something that you would do or type in in order to use this for different different maps like if you want to have this work only for a certain team that is carrying out an objective or a mission then you would put in a text for them that says something like find a button or something similar like that you can do whatever you want play audio I'm just gonna put yes I mean no because I really don't want to and now here's the important part explode when receiving from channel one remember we had the button trigger on channel one that means that once that button is pushed it's gonna explode and then turn on visibility when receiving from turn off visibility when exploded transmit on blah 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 so for instance I can chain these together if I wanted to put a bunch of them up and then just keep changing the number explode when receiving from two explode when receiving from three and then keep changing the other number when exploded transmitted on two when exploded transmit on three and it would cause like a chain effect and all of these could be linked together I think up to like 10 or 12 of them and so now we got through all of that the blast radius we have that everything this should be programmed properly so now we need to test this out by starting the game now see you can't see the explosive device but I know and you know it's there and we could even jump over there jump on there walk up there as if it's not even there and so now we start let's just pretend we started a match go up do some builds real quick okay I got my pre-edited piece here the other thing is this fall damage is already off which is good you don't want to have fall damage on so now I gotta find the button that's right here push the clear builds boom and see now that's where the collides with everything thing is messed up because it took away our ramp, took away parts of the floor, our player spawns, everything's gone. That's not what we wanted. Uh, in your island, you have to change the settings. Now I have to go through here and find it, so bear with me. Building can destroy environment damage. Determines whether players can damage the environment during the game. Off. Structure damage. Sets which structures players are able to damage based on who built them during the game. All self built. Enemy and self built. You can destroy those and that's it. Okay, so this will fix the problem. As long as it is applied. So I'm going to go to tools, backup the backup button which means it's going to save it then I'm going to start the game and see if I have corrected the problem and I believe I have okay start the game bunch of builds here Go to the button. Done deal. Alright. Now everything that we started with is still there. Stuff like this, you know, you can clean it up yourself. I'm actually just going to change change it to make it more powerful again. And that'll probably fix that also. So then now, where we go from here is we start to customize the map to look even more like we want and to select the guns. I'm going to do the gun selection next so that I don't, if you don't want to do customization, you can just skip past all of this. Break up the floor, obviously. Place some wood down. Go into creative. Then I'm going to 
go to weapons I mean I'm sorry devices team settings and inventory so I'm gonna quit equip this I only got one I'm gonna lay it down customize team name is irrelevant because it's going to be for all it means everybody's going to spawn with these weapons all these things it says don't override meaning the team settings and inventory aren't going to override other rules or settings that I have in the game that this is just for whatever I do with it so grant Adam items on respawn I'm gonna say yes that way if you respawn you get them I don't know why you would but maybe you do and then grant condition always determines what happens to the player's inventory when they respawn keep all that means you get to keep your items you could drop them equip granted item don't equip visible during game no I don't want it to be seen uh, I'm gonna say yes because I think if not the floor is going to be bare there so I'm just gonna leave it like this and now what you need to do is you need to drop what weapons you want in there so I'm going to select the weapons I want to start with and you just drop the items right over top of it it automatically registers them if you see them sitting there and it hasn't then you know go ahead and register them. so now every time you spawn in a match anybody that spawns I'm gonna start the game and show you they will have these three weapons already in their inventory so essentially now you have an entire map where you can do a build battle and you have weapons now to customize I'm going to do other things I'm going to add vending machines under here you have to customize it by hitting square First item resource type wood, cost of first item, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to put no cost because it really doesn't matter. You're just going to select it and you have, you're have you going to have infinite resources anyway. Just say okay, there's really nothing we need to do there. Same thing with this. Okay, they're already set that way. So now you just get the guns. By going into creative, selecting whatever weapon you want to switch it. Okay. So I'm going to go to play. Oh, hitting R1. And I'm going to go to select what I want to drop and drop it. I'll drop all five. See, now it shows up on the screen because it's been registered. The fish are on there too. So now on this side. What do we want here? Let's just say a purple tack will do. Purple tack and Purple Heavy Assault. And let's do a Sniper. Say a purple heavy. Then we go back into play mode by hitting R1. Square to drop, square to drop. So I'm just going to erase this one in the middle. It's not really necessary. So now we have heels and a grenade oh, and grenades over here. And I think that's pretty cool. And now the other thing that I want to do to customize is you add these buttons if anybody knows about these you can jump on them and jump high you can see these builds it'll help help you to jump back up if say you fall down in the middle of your build battle 
And so that means I'm pretty much done. There's some things I might do later to customize this ramp for the sake of colors, but I might just do that in another video. So I'm going to start the game now and show you the finished product. You can see up here, it's all brown, uh, red nebula. Here are our vending machines. So I'm going to use this vending machine. Get me a purple tat. And I like that. That's my one of my favorite guns. So I'm gonna take that AR and I'm going to drop the pump even though I really want it. Just to pick up a slurp fish when it comes up. Alright. Now I have one slurp fish, which is cool because I thought everything was unlimited on here. And that's the thing, I'm gonna have to change it to unlimited ammo. Because who wants to find ammo in the middle of a map like this? There's a couple more things. I'm going to make sure that there is infinite ammo, and I'll show you how to select that. And I'm going to double check and make sure that you cannot walk through the barrier. Because if you can walk through it, it kind of defeats the purpose of having it there. And then people will hide. So let's go look at that real quick. Here we go. Black weapon fire, yes. So I think that means you can't go through it. Yeah. Alright, so that's good. And now I need to select infinite ammo. And the way that I'll do that is go into my island game. And you set this up any way you want. I want infinite ammo. You might not... But I don't know anybody that hasn't. Spawn limit infinite. Total rounds one. Well, I also want to make sure there's no time limit on here. Time, see how it says five minutes? I'm just going to put none. No time limit. Time of day. You can also make this look really cool. I want to show you some stuff. Uh, camera filter comic you can make it look like a comic book inside which I like to do in some of my other maps uh, you can make it look like a sepia tone or sepia however you say that retro low exposure film noir and I'll show you what these look like here we'll start with comic but first I'm going to make sure that there is max ammo infinite ammo right there it's on now you just select it in the settings okay just like I did the comic I'm gonna go back now you see it looks more like a comic book. You see how the wood looks? There is that comic look on the floor. And everything looks more like a comic book, which I think looks really cool. Also, they have sepia, which I don't like as much. It makes it really dark and bland. You can go to retro which gives you a really cool look as you can see my player is glowing and things look really really cool like if you're going for I guess it's called a retro look to me it's more futuristic but okay call it retro then there is low exposure which makes it darker basically really dark looks pretty cool to me and go to film noir which basically makes it look black and white different shades of gray and black and white default normal I think I'm gonna do comic I don't know I really liked retro retro is pretty sweet let's see how that looks when you're building and trying to track I don't have a gun. I don't want to trip people out. I'm going to go back to regular. Go to regular for this. Default. Alright. 
So that's my tutorial. Hope you guys liked it. Please give the video a like, share, subscribe, and all that cool stuff if you do like it. And help me get to a thousand subscribers so these maps that I make can become public and they can be put into the hub. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve of Soap Moss Gaming. Take care. Hey, the video is over. Thanks for watching. Did you subscribe too? If not, you know it's free, right? Subscribe, comment, hit the bell, and share right now. Come on, you can't mess this up. It's so easy. Oh yeah, and uh, watch these other videos. I think they're up here. Or, or they might be over here. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think they're over here. Cool. Click it. And here's a dab just because. Spider-Man out.